Today's message is reaching the lost like Jesus did. It's going to come from John chapter 4, verse 6 to 26. It's a little bit of a longer group of verses all together. Uh, but at least you won't have to hop around or anything. This message, it'll apply to more than just leading people to Christ. It is a good way to deal with people in general as well. Did you ever argue somebody to Christ? But isn't that a lot of times when we talk about Christ isn't, to a non-believer, isn't that what it becomes? An argument? I don't think there's one of us here sitting that has ever argued somebody to Christ or that we've been able to stress upon them why they need Christ through an argument. Because the matter we get, the matter they get, and the wall starts to be built in between. It applies with leading them to Christ or in other things in our lives as well. It was once said that the only argument you will win is the one you avoid. And how much truth there is in that. Ben Franklin also penned in 1744, he wasn't the first one to say this, but he penned it then, you catch more flies with honey than you do with vinegar. And think about that, if we're going to try and reach the lost, are we going to share vinegar with them or are we going to use honey? Or something sweet. But a lot of times we struggle with sharing the sweet parts of our Savior. And we worry more about the things that we should do or shouldn't do instead of just sharing the love that Christ has for them and for us. I'm going to read John chapter 4, verses 6 through 26. I'd ask that you would follow along. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied from his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, asketh drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Jesus answered and said unto her, If thou knowest the gift of God and who it is that saith to thee, Give me to drink, thou wouldest have asked of him, and he would have given thee living water. The woman saith unto him, Sir, thou hast nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. From whence then hast thou that living water? Art thou greater than our father Jacob, which gave us the well, and drank thereof himself and his children and his cattle? Jesus answered and said unto her, Whosoever drinketh of the water shall thirst again. But whosoever drinketh of the water that I shall give him shall never thirst. But the water that I shall give him shall be in him a well of water, springing up unto everlasting life. The woman saith unto him, Sir, give me this water that I thirst not, neither come hither to draw. Jesus saith unto her, Go, call thy husband and come hither. The woman answered and said, I have no husband. Jesus said unto her, Thou hast well said, I have no husband. For thou hast had five husbands, and he whom thou now hast is not thy husband. In that saidest thou truly. The woman saith unto him, Sir, I perceive that thou art a prophet. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Jesus saith unto her, Woman, believe me. The hour cometh when ye shall neither in this mountain nor yet in Jerusalem worship the Father. Ye worship ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. 
but the hour cometh and now is when the true worshipers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit, and they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. The woman saith unto him, I know that Messiah cometh, which is called Christ. When he is come, he will tell us all things. Jesus saith unto her, I that speaketh unto thee am he. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, I just thank you for this scripture that you have given us. This woman at the well that Jesus seeked out and shared your love with her. Lord, I pray as each and every one of us sit here in these pews, Lord, I pray that they would have the love of you as a fountain overflowing out of their lives and into the rest of the world. And Lord, I know that we all know ones that are not saved, that are serving this world. And Lord, I pray that we could be a fountain overflowing and and we could make a difference in their lives, that we could be difference makers. Lord, I just pray that this message would resonate in everybody's life here this morning. Lord, give me the words to speak that it would not be your, my message, but it would be your message. Lord, that I would say only what you would want. We thank you for all your many blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. Now, as we look at these verses here, we can pick up a couple of different things as far as reaching the lost. The first thing we can see is Jesus puts himself in the right place at the right time. His disciples have gone on into town to get them meat to be able to eat. They've been journeying for the day. So he places himself at this well, and he's there by himself, which is probably one of the first things if we're going to approach somebody about Christ, we probably shouldn't do it while there's a big crowd around. We should probably have a time just like this. You know, it probably would have went much differently if his disciples would have been still there with him. And this woman would have came and Jesus would have started this conversation. I have a feeling she would have tried to probably be pretty quiet and try and avoid the situation and maybe even left. There's a good and a bad time for us to share things. It might be something good that we want to share, but it might not be the right time to share it because people might not be willing to listen to what we have to share. And also a little bit of a background to this time period. It was the woman's responsibility to go and draw water from the well or wherever they would get well. It was the woman's responsibility to do this. And normally it would be done at two times of the day. It would be done in the morning and in the evening. Now this woman comes at the sixth hour. The sixth hour is not 6 a.m. or 6 p.m. Their timetables were not the same as ours are today. Uh, An easy way to look at it is the first hour is when the sun rose. So basically, if you're looking at the sixth hour of the day, it is noontime. So it's right in the middle of when most women would be coming to gather water at the well because they would either do it in the morning or in the evening. And here she's there at noon. So you might wonder right there, well, why is she there at noon while all the other people come in the morning and in the evening? And then you also see that Jesus is just sitting there at the well. Now, one thing that's amazing about Jesus, Jesus knows what's coming. He knows this woman. He has a huge advantage over what we have as far as sharing with somebody about Christ. But here he is sitting at the well, and this woman walks up, and Jesus says, give me to drink. Now, I'm going to suggest don't try this, okay? Because like when I was reading this, I'm kind of envisioning it like if it took place today, 
And normally we go to like a convenience store to get a drink. And I can just see somebody, let's stand there by the coolers and wait for a woman to come up. And she goes to open the cooler and say, woman, give me drink. I have a feeling she might hit you over the head or she might, you know, it's probably not a good way to start a conversation now. So you got to kind of realize it's, it's a different time frame, a different society, it was something that was somewhat normal for a man to ask a woman to draw water and give to him. But after he shares this, Jesus knows that she's there at noontime for a reason. Okay? And, you know, we've all picked up on these same types of things, maybe in the workplace or something. We've picked up that people are are doing things because something is going on that's wrong. There's just something that's not right. And that's why this woman is here at noontime when nobody else should be there at the well. She was expecting to come, draw her water, and go back home and not see anybody. That was her plan. But Jesus was there that day and completely changed her plans all the way around. And Jesus knows there's something wrong, and he's going to let her have the opportunity to tell him what's wrong. And Jesus listens to what she says. He's going to have a conversation, and he's truly going to listen to what she says. You ever have somebody ask you a question, and they don't even listen to what you have to answer? It kind of ends the conversation, doesn't it? You know, if we're going to reach people for Christ, when we ask them a question, we really need to listen to what they say in response. Don't be worried about what you're going to say next to them. Be concerned about what they're going to say to you. And Jesus attentively listens to her. And she says, I'm a Samaritan and you're a Jew. Jews don't deal with Samaritans. So why are you even asking me to draw you water? This is the first thing that she's struggling with, that she is a Samaritan. Racism is not something new today. It's exactly what was going on in Jesus' day with the Samaritans. The Samaritans were not liked by the Jews because they were half Jew and half Assyrian. The Syrians had come into Samaria. They had captured the the city, and the Jews that were still left there started to marry the Assyrians that had taken it captive. And that's how it became the Samaritan race. And the Jews didn't like them because they weren't pure anymore. They felt that they had betrayed their, their Jewish line their family. So they weren't liked. She didn't have any choice that she was a Samaritan. But yet they didn't like her because she was. It's the first problem that she she brings up to the Lord. And you know, racism will continue until we look at people the way God does. God loves them all enough to send his son to die for them. And at that point, when we finally look at everybody in those same eyes as God does, racism will not be anymore. But when we continue to look at people, whether they're Samaritans, half this, half that, or whatever they might be, we'll continue to look at race, which really means nothing. So after she says about being a Samaritan and you a Jew, and why do you even want to talk to me? Then Jesus shares just a little bit about living water. You know, we can't overwhelm them from the very beginning with what we share. We have to break it down. We have to give them little bits and pieces for them to help understand. After he shares this little bit about living water, now she starts to ask some questions. This living water, you have nothing to draw with. How are you going to give me living water? 
Where is this water? I kind of think maybe she's thinking, you know, what are you talking about? Are you really true? Do you really mean these things that you are saying? And she's asking these questions with him. But she is interested or she wouldn't be asking these questions. We have to give people a chance to ask questions if we want them to to follow in Christ. And that's what Jesus allowed her to do. With this woman asking questions to Jesus, he goes a little deeper. It's kind of like if you're fishing. You know, you throw some bait out there and the fish is kind of nibbling at it. And they, really, they really aren't biting, but they're, they're nibbling on that bait. So maybe you want to throw something a little bit bigger, a little bit better out there. So that's what Jesus does. He goes a little bit deeper with her. He shares a little more. He compares the water in the well to his living water that a person will never thirst again. Now, that's a pretty amazing thing to never thirst again. And I'm sure this woman, as she's there at the well, thinking that would be great. I no longer have to come here and try and draw water and secretive and not be bothered. I can get this water and never have to come and gather again. I think of a very hot day in the summertime and you're working hard and you just can't quench your thirst. Just think if you could take a drink and never have to drink again. And this is where this woman's at now. After he shares this, she wants this water. She looks at all the benefits of having this water, this fountain springing up inside of her. And she says, sir, give me this water that you have. I want what you have. Do we create a desire for other people to want what we have? Do people see us as Christians and think, wow, what that person has, I want for my life. I can see that difference in their lives. I can see the joy that they have. No matter what they face, they still have this overwhelming joy. Do people see that in us? Do they see something that they truly desire and want? Jesus has created a desire in her that she wants something that up until that day she had no idea she wanted. People need to have a desire for Christ in order to accept Christ. We're not going to be able to force Christ upon anybody, and he didn't force himself upon anyone. But he did create a desire that they wanted something that he had and only he could give them. And then finally, at this point, when she really wants what he has, Jesus is going to address her home life, the sin problem that she has in her life. He didn't start there. But how many times have you started the conversation with a non-believer with the sin problem first? trying to tell them how they're living their lives wrong, how they're doing all these things wrong and they need to change. Maybe you shared that, you know, if they don't accept Jesus, hell is going to be waiting for them for all eternity. So often we start with those things and they don't even have a desire yet of what we want to offer. They get pushed away because we want to address the problem first. And then we wonder why it doesn't help at all. And this might be with our own children, maybe with family members, or with friends or coworkers. What about strangers that we come in contact with? 
Maybe it's that homeless person that we see on the street. And one of the first thoughts that we have is, why should I give them $5? Because they're just going to go buy alcohol or drugs with it. What kind of Jesus do they see in us when we turn our back to them? Do we show them a desire of something they really want? Or we're so focused on the problems that they have that they're on the street in the first place. And we think we need to fix that problem first before there's any Jesus for them. Jesus shared all these things with love and compassion. And then he goes on to say, God is looking for true worshipers to worship in spirit and truth. He did not say God is looking for perfect people. It's exactly why Jesus could share the message with this Samaritan woman in the condition she was in. He didn't say, go and make yourself perfect and come back to me and I'll give you this living water. Because there's not one of us that are perfect. He offered her this living water long before he even talked about any sin in her life. And as he shared about these true worshipers coming in spirit and truth to worship the Father, she knew that the Messiah was coming. Just like many today know Jesus. They know Jesus' name. Go into the workplace a lot of times and you can hear people using Jesus' name all the time in the wrong way. They know Jesus' name. Even the demons know Jesus' name. In Mark 1, 24, it says how the demons cried out to Jesus, knowing his name. But you know what? Knowing Jesus' name won't get you to heaven. Accepting what Jesus did on the cross will. Many people think, I will, I will get myself cleaned up first. And then I'll turn to God. I've heard this statement said by different ones that, you know, they'll say that, you know, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really in a rough situation. I'm really doing a lot of things wrong in life. And, you know, once I get, I get this or this or that controlled, then I'll go to God. Jesus didn't say anything about about that for the living water, did he? We can't fix or do the work that Jesus already did on the cross. And we can't do that on other people either that have not met Jesus. The world needs to hear that the work is done by Jesus on the cross. And that is up to us as believers to tell them. That day after Jesus talked to her at the well, the disciples returned and soon she leaves. She left a changed woman telling others she met the Messiah. She had Jesus' living water overflowing in her. How about you today? Do you have this fountain overflowing inside of you? People that you come in contact with and you meet out on the street, do they realize that there's a fountain of living water overflowing inside of you? Or do you just hold that fountain, that cup so so still to make sure that none spills out and you just have enough for yourself and not worried about the lost. I'm going to have Scotty come and he's going to close us with a, a song. Maybe you're here today and you're in a position where 
you don't even know Jesus as your Lord and Savior yourself, and maybe you want to come and make that commitment. You want to have that living water inside of you. Or maybe you're in a situation where you have a loved one that you want to lead to Christ and that you've tried before and have failed and that maybe you want to come and start here at the altar and just pray for that person and try and do things in a loving way like Christ did with this Samaritan woman. Put a little bit of a recap together. First, we need the right place and the right time. We have to ask questions and show true interest in the other person. Be sincere. Share a little, don't overwhelm them all at one time. Give them a chance to ask questions and process what you have shared. And when they have interest, share more with them. When they want what God has to offer, then you can share the solution to the sin problem that they have. And no matter what, to do all of this with love and compassion. At this time, Scotty will come and sing, and if you'd like to come to the altar and pray, maybe for a loved one or for yourself for salvation, I'd ask that you would come and and do so at this time.